Well, hello there, everybody. Let me hit that button and let me hit that little. And here we go. And it's a happy prosperity day. Monday. Hey, you know, you're here. Make it a good one. That's the way I always look at it. Make it count. Yeah. So what's up, everybody? I hope you had a great couple of days, uh, the old Saturday and Sunday. And thank you for tuning in on the Saturday message. It's spread everywhere. It's amazing uh, because it was like that was the universal thought that was required. So, and as I continue to go over here and go, geez, are we live? Yes, just not showing. Hmm. Well, I can see that I'm live. So whether YouTube uh, is up to date on their data, I don't know. So what's up, everyone? Uh, how are you doing? Yes, the message of love and peace. I'll tell you, uh, it is what counts. And, you know, I don't have a clue as to why that is doing what it's doing, but we can go right over here and uh, I can see it live right there. So, heck, I don't need the other one, do I? All right, everybody, as he goes over here, and allow me one second, and as I hit that, and we'll see. So uh, what else is, man, I mean, I got a list like this long. It's like, geez. Uh, but it's interesting because I came upon a different maybe perspective to add to all this, uh, and that's what I will be sharing today. So we'll hit it over there, and there I am there. So, yeah, very cool, people. Yeah, <laughs> it's like now everything is working. Delays, isn't it? Technology. Yeah, it's our undoing. But before we get to our undoing, I'll just speak favor over us all. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And... uh you know, may you continue to prosper. Nothing missing, nothing broken is true prosperity. I mean, you don't need a big bank account. If you got everything and you're at peace, man, you're rich. You're spirit rich. Uh, Elderberry, what's up? Good to see you. John Price, say hello, Chris. Good to see you. Uh, Nina, good to see you, darling. Uh, Shirley Devine, good to see you. Lost in Space, what's up? I saw some others in here earlier, and uh, I know I saw Gilbert. Welcome. We uh, welcome everybody. Love the music. Yeah, that's what I say. I got the music in May. Uh, I was on the show Friday with uh, Mr. Robert V over in uh, the Milky Way Soul Tribe channel. Had a great time. I enjoyed it. I hope you've gone over there and looked at it. I think you have. Uh, it was a good time. Enjoyed it. It was a good weekend. And uh, Leanne, I haven't forgotten about you, but spend time, hello, go, go, all the way over from Croatia. Good to see you, Carol. Good to see you, Colleen. Hello, uh, Celine. Good to see you. I understand you are from uh, Canada. Is that right? Quebec. Did I get that right? New Yoda. What's up? Dave Sullivan. Hello, Rick. What's up there? Lori, good to see you. Um, anyway, uh, Leanne, I will be answering your email. I had to spend some time on that. Yeah. Papa Joe, what's up? Good to see you. Uh, Drumstead, good to see you as well. Uh, got to see Dilbert. It was always good to be on with Mr. Dilbert. Um, anyway, welcome spring. Yeah, today is the first day of spring. Well, I think technically for us, it's like 424 this afternoon. And so... The renewal of life has begun. Maybe more truer than what we ever could imagine. I'm telling you, is the truth. Um, also, Lynn and I met uh, Charlie and Terry, been a part of the group here for years and years. Uh, had a delightful time. Uh, had some broke bread and, you know, just had good fellowship. It was uh, a time spent in um, getting to know more, you know, when you actually get in the flesh, 
yeah, don't tell me the flesh is bad, man. The flesh is cool. But uh, really got to uh, spend some quality time with uh, Charlie and Terry and amazing how similar life paths or events that were in their lives was in our lives. And I know in many of y'all's lives, there was something happening. I, I, I don't know what it was specifically, but the period from, I would say, there was like this four-year window from like 2012 to 2016, where I, I'm finding out there was a, there was this, I don't know what to call it. To say an awakening uh, is almost uh, cliche-ish, uh, but something profound happened. And it is just my humble opinion uh, that before something like that manifests on us as a species, it's been manifested in the ethereal realm. I was taught that all during my 50 years of indoctrination in Christianity, that nothing happens here unless it happens there first. Yeah. I may have a different point of view, but that was the theology of the time. And but something happened. I, I it was amazing because there was this wow, a great awareness. Maybe that's the appropriate word. But anyway, how many uh, of y'all were? kind of in that hey scotty boy how you doing good to see you my friend mr floyd how are you uh and good to see you as well william hello but can i see it in the chat room and if you're listening to this on replay how you doing thanks for tuning in i mean your time is as valuable it's the most valuable thing you have in this realm so thank you it's an honor and a privilege to be able to have your attention, and uh, I respect that and honor that. So, and you know, I kind of look at this whole thing that you know, you you give the most valuable thing that you have into this gathering, this get together that we have. Um, that makes this all very rich. I mean, there there's a monetary system. Screw that. I mean, we're talking something, baby. We're talking something way up there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but getting back to that, 2012 to 2016, what we're seeing now is interesting because, and this is supported by facts, uh, any number of the data centers that follow these type of uh, numbers, um, yeah, we're seeing the single largest exodus of people leaving their religions. And I'm not just calling out one religion. It seems to be um, pretty universal. Uh, Joe, what's up? Um, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Can you hear me, Joe? <laughs> hey, Flight Risk, what's up? Got your email too. Uh, Loretta, hello. How are you? Um, but yeah. And it it was remarkable. And while we had uh, lunch with uh, Charlie and Terry, and by the way, they harvest, they, they brought me this. This is uh, chaga. I did not know what chaga was, but um, it is, it grows off a plant, a trees, and uh, they harvest it. And uh, yeah, it's mushrooms. Yeah. So far out. I put it in some hot chocolate. Can't even taste it. So anyway, I digress. Uh, and again, Charlie and Terry, thank you. Much love to y'all. And we will be getting back together. Absolutely. But again, this, this 2012, 2016, and today we're seeing it represented. And it's interesting. I, I wonder what the the spiritualist movement, you know, that, that came in about 1870 
and then waned out, um, you know, a number of years after that. Then we saw kind of a resurgence again in the 1920s to the 30s, just happened to be some of the hardest economic times. Isn't that odd? Um, but I wonder if spiritualists back then, what their comment would be today, looking at us and seeing what's happening, because something is happening to all of us. Um, if you're a baby boomer, a boomer, uh, yeah, um, it's interesting. I got into this because of what we have been discussing, the advancements in technology. We're in the, the single largest uh, evolution of our species in the way that we treat uh, sickness, things that ail us as a species. And you think about it, for about the last, I don't know, about maybe 100 years, everything was petroleum-based. Now, I don't know. I, you know, I'm no, you know, the smartest guy in the world, but, you know, I'm thinking, so you're extracting everything from oil, basically. No, I wouldn't eat oil. <laughs> I'm just telling you, but apparently we eat more of it than what we realize. Do you know that the average person on earth, particularly if you're an industrialized country, how much plastic we have in us. I, I don't know, but I don't think that was part of the original blueprint. Uh, you know, here they are, you know, on the uh, gene table and doing the, you know, whole mixing around. And someone says, hey, you think we ought to put plastic in there? <laughs> what the hell? You well, get the hell out of here. You know, it's like, geez. Um, but yeah. And it's interesting because the consumption of plastic, I mean, who knows what that does? And then we, we look at disease now on the cellular level different because instead of trying to adapt and it's, it's kind of, I, listen, it's above my head, um, but I can grasp enough to understand what they're getting at. And so when you begin to say, well, if we could program the cell, what would that do? Well, that's what they did to us, whoever they are. I still don't know who they are. You know, not buying the guy standing with the white beard going, hey, you, you know, that's a, you know, I think uh, Jean was on the show and she said, you know, it's right. It's a golem. I mean, that that's technically makes you wonder because, you know, then you get off and I'm not going to get off into to that tangent, but you got the six day people. I mean, you know, what the hell happened with them? And then you got us and then all of a sudden we were us and, you know, we were yakking and tacking and talking and backing and, you know, the whole bit. Uh, now, if you don't buy that theory, then you have that we are the result of either the evolutionary process that is naturally occurring within every species. And just merely because we are at a moment in time within that evolutionary change does not mean that evolution is not stopped. It never does stop. Or you could say you, uh, we could add to this that, you know, there were higher levels of consciousness came together they started passing the pipe around and they started, you know, really, you know, getting into the conversation and, you know, man, the vibes were really good. And they said, Hey, let's create something like us. You know, and then they got to, you know, on the gene table and said, yeah, how about, how about this? You know, it's like the matrix. Well, let's see. We want her to have red hair and, you know, so we got to put in. Yeah. Now, anyone that can do that, that's a higher level of consciousness. But in either case, <laughs> in either case, we are seeing the evolutionary change of our species. Within the next generation, the genus 
of our species, man, will change. We're witnessing it. Uh, I want to share a couple of things here with everybody on this, because this is its rather fascinating when you think about it. So think about this. Uh, this is newscientist.com. Um, they had an article, and it, it said, could humans evolve into two different species in the future? Well, if you think about this, this, this article went on and it, it says it brings out the pack, fact that we are changing. Our species is changing. It always has been changing, but we're seeing a change now that in, in many schools of thought, scientists have come in, in and saying that they think something has activated this hyper acceleration of this evolutionary process of a species. Because we keep thinking that we're the top of the top here. You know, in in in, in my years of uh <laughs> initiation into the occult, you know, we were taught that, you know, we were God's crowning creation. We were the tops. Well, if that's the case, then it really sucks to be the other part of the family tree on that homogeneous tree of life. It wasn't just us. Do my famous Kirk. Uh, and here it says, given enough time, the genetic change in the isolated community might eventually lead to the formation of a new species. We're discovering this all the time. We're discovering new animals that we didn't even realize existed. Goes on to say, however, humans were isolated in Australia for at least 50,000 and possibly as much as 125,000, and yet they remain the same species as those in the rest of the world. So what's up with that? Mm, mm -mm. So, look at us today. We're divided. Here's a thought. What if it isn't really us, I mean, by our own sense of free will and nature? What if this is something that has been put into the genetic code, given you know, an internal clock, certain conditions begin to manifest themselves. This triggers a response within everyone within the genus of our species. So it goes on to talk about how this divergence within the evolutionary aspect and in the intermingling of so many genetic codes, it's it's mind-boggling. Um, from that, evolution will begin to build the next version. No version of us, whether it's sapiens, whether it's Neanderthals, however far you want to go back, is ever constant. We're, we're going to fall. We will be remembered in the annals of history as to whatever history shall tag the Homo sapien line with. And so let me get into this next article here because this is really interesting. So the interesting thing is, is that we're constantly finding earlier versions of us. Here is a new species called <clears throat> Homo Bodanaeus. Um, so scientists have recently named a new species of human ancestor, Homo Boadianus, uh, and they like, where did this come from? Well, we now know they said the team found the species lived in the middle uh, Pleistocene era that took place, what, 700, 75,000 to 130,000 years ago. Says Homo boedianus 
is thought to be the most direct ancestor of humans, living in Africa and being succeeded by the Homo sapiens on the same continent on uh, and the Neanderthals in Europe. You know, it's amazing how us sapiens, we, we, we really think that our feces doesn't stink. We think that we're all smart. No. In fact, as the evidence is showing, the next one of us, well, it's going to be interesting this. So this is interesting. I won't get into all of this, as it's, but you, you read this and, you know, then you I think about the Neanderthals. You know, they were here for several hundred thousand years. Man, they had their own thing going on. They had the rock concerts, you know. They didn't have them on Sunday because, you know, they really didn't need Sunday, man. They usually typically have them on a Thursday or, you know, they were Neanderthals. They kind of, you know, these were these were happening people, man. They were constantly on the move. There was always something happening. My point is, is that they seem to get along just fine. Hundreds of thousands of years. And then the sapiens show up. Now, the thing about sapiens is this. They're a mean-ass species. I mean, them sapiens, they're liars, they're deceivers, uh, they'll steal from you. Uh, if you get real cross with them, they'll even kill you. Neanderthals are like, whoa, 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 man. Gotta chill out, will you? Nope. So, Hundreds of thousands of years. And then we come along. Gets even stranger. So here is an article. Uh, this is on libpublishing.com. Um, this author is proposing that we are in the fourth great transformation says Don Simborg explains what the next human species will look like and what the fourth great transformation would mean for us all. Dig this. When interviewed about his books, he says he often is the first question is asked, so what will the next human species look like? He says, I, uh, I never answer homo nuvero. Uh, which is the name I have given the next human species since it really doesn't tell anyone anything. What they really want to know is what does this creature look like? We're a creature. You know, there are some dead divine ones and, and angels included that look on humans. They think we're ugly. In fact, truth be told, most of these spirits don't really want anything to do with us. We're, we're hideous in their sight. See how that door swings both ways? Um, he says uh, the, the simple answer is that they're going to look like us. What does that mean? Well, he says homo sapiens have a lot of different looks, and yes, and so will the new homo novel. All right, so we got this nouveau thing going on. Okay, but that's not the only guy who's got the uh, only gig in town on this. Um, because they're constantly finding new ancestors, well, all of those ancestors, it seems like they, they kind of, uh, you know, added their own ingredient to the brew. Says uh, this is the uh, National History Museum. Uh, dot, I think this is yeah. Dot UK. So this one talks about a new potential human species may redraw the family tree. And this is the uh, Homo uh, boendius, and they get more into this how their genetic makeup, well, wasn't quite like ours. But yet they added to ours. Now, the thing I'm I'm wondering at the same time I'm reading all these articles. This one is uh, theconversation.com. 
says the future evolution from looks to brains and personality, how will humans change in the next 10,000 years? I think that's to, that, that, that's taken a broad leap that we're going to be here in 10,000 years. Let it be so. But I don't think it's going to be us. I don't think it's going to be anything looking like us. Um, he says, if humans don't die out in a climate apocalypse or an asteroid impact in the next 10,000 years or the sun going nova, uh, are we likely to evolve further into a more advanced species than what we are at the moment? This is the question Harry Bonus asked. He said, humanity is unlikely the result of a 4 billion years of evolution. That puts us about as old as this planet. From self-replicating molecules in the Archean Sea to eyeless fish and the Cambrian Deep to mammals scurrying from dinosaurs in the dark and then finally, improbably, us. Evolution shaped us. Organisms reproduced imperfectly. Mistakes made when copying genes sometimes made their better fit into the environment. So those genes tended to get passed on. Uh, more reproduction followed and more mistakes. Uh, the process repeating over billions of generations. Finally, Homo sapiens appeared. But we aren't the end of the story. Evolution won't stop with us. And we might even be evolving faster than ever. This is an eye-opening article. It says, it's hard to predict the future. The world will probably change in ways we can't imagine, but we can make our educated guesses. Now, if you believe in reincarnation, then you can put yourself into the fact that, I guess, you're going to be a part of this future. I don't like the idea of reincarnation. I think that it is, well, We'll continue that another time. Anyway, uh, but we can make educated guesses. Paradoxically, the best way to predict the future is probably looking back at the past and assuming past trends will continue going forward. This suggests some surprising things about our future. We will likely live longer and become taller as well as more lightly built. We'll probably be less aggressive and more agreeable but have smaller brains. A bit like a golden retriever. We'll be friendly and jolly, uh, but maybe not that interesting. At least that's one possible future. But to understand why, he says, I think that we likely will not, uh, we will need to look at biology. And he's going to go on about this. My point is, are we seeing that today? Today, the average height, I think, for a male is 5'10", I think, maybe 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, we know that that's going to be moved up. People are getting taller. I mean, if you look just 100 years ago at the statute of what a man and a woman was in their average height, I think it was 5'6". We're changing. Uh, I don't know how, what the technology is doing to us, but... It appears to have something because it all kind of stems right from the old brain, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, he goes on talking about natural selection. That's working. We see it right now. I mean, one of the things they keep on saying is that our technology will eventually give us longer lifespans. But the other side of that debate is, is that if you had that technology, if you had that technology that you could, you understand how the genes work and you can uh, stack them, rack them, and pack them, uh, you could, in essence, alter the evolutionary natural process of man. Humanity. We have become gods. Uh, but they say in the future we'll be able to live to be at least, they say, 150, possibly much older. 
If we don't get wiser, <laughs> I don't know that's a good thing. Uh, but the debate is, is that if humans live longer, then we're going to have to really get our act together as to how do we change this, this law of consumption. Because these bodies right now, whoever designed these bodies, they were designed never to leave this atmosphere. That's why I don't believe we will ever go to space as a species. I believe we'll have avatars. I believe we'll have a symbiotic uh, type of robot of some sort. I think they. I think we'll eventually develop the neural net that can actually live within an artificial uh, machine. That in essence, you would have these minuets in these vessels going out into interstellar space being controlled by us. That gets weird. <laughs> it's like, man, I don't know if I want on that ship, you know? It's like, let me the hell out of here. I guess the good thing is, is that you could technically get out of there. But anyway, um, this is a, a great article. It talks about how we will start growing. Um, remember, if the Nephilim, the Raytheum, were actually here, those genes somehow or another got into our genes. You know, uh, I have had a lot of people write me and say, how can you keep saying that we're simians? Because we are. We're talking simians. And no matter how much that kind of just bugs you, you know, you can't explain where the Rh factor come in. Tell me where the rhesus hemoglobin got into our blood. We would run on a lung. <laughs> and uh, finally, and I, I won't get into this one. Uh, it's a uh, pretty interesting little slideshow, but uh, anyway. Think about it, man. <laughs> it's stranger but true. Uh, so how is everybody? So how does it feel to kind of be in that uh, gene pool, man? I mean, you know, you come in into the water and you get out of the water, man, and, and, and something's changed. You know, it's like it's that stunt. I and a good friend of mine did when I was much younger. You know, if you put industrial purple dye into a swimming pool, and if a uh, five-year-old and six-year-old kid that are blonde-headed jump in, you're going to have a transformation. <laughs> <laughs> Quite amazing to see what purple does to the skin. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> you had to be there. It was funny. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so when I, I, I've said all that to get to this point. So is this what God has planned? It is this, because I, we, I tell you, having, uh, lunch with Charlie and uh, Terry was great because they come from a similar uh, doctrine of faith uh, that uh, we did. And, you know, I, I'm just sitting here and going, uh, okay. Um, hey, Graham, what's up? Good to see you. Uh, so was Jesus the Lord and Savior for Neanderthals? was God, God of the Bible, the God of the Neanderthals? How about, how about the Bonanaeus? We don't know who they were, but they were apparently, we're, we were the next in line in that evolutionary step. I mean, did did they did they did they just simply say, "Hey, don't go to that garden, man. You start eating their kind of shit, man. It's going to change you, man." 
I'm just trying to reason this out. So let's talk about black magic. Where was these demons? Were they the demons of the Neanderthals? Maybe the Cro-Magnus. Hmm. Don't see nothing written about them. No history. Nothing. But along comes Sapiens, and guess what? Hello, everybody. We want to introduce you to our God. Now, our God has got a multi-personality. You can choose this side of the personality or that side of the personality. What you're going to think that you really have is free choice and all this, but what we can tell you is that from the beginning, you never had a choice at all. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, good night, everybody. Uh... <laughs> uh... Or, or, or was it this situation? We're in a Petri dish. We're looking up. And, you know, we're looking at each other going, oh, shit, they got us now. Where, where, where is this place? You know, and they're adding stuff to the Petri dish and things get weirder. I don't know. See, folks, when we get into the demonology series, I want y'all just to be sure that you really get what's going on here. If these beings exist, and I'm saying on both sides of the line, they're egregores. Because, you see, their story doesn't pass the background check. I got the report in, and they failed. We can't give them security clearance because they're untrustworthy. They got a long rap sheet of just a line of bullshit that they've been selling us for thousands and thousands of years. So what's going on? I, I find it interesting as well. It's, I'm finding that the most haunted place on the planet seems to be in the Middle East. These these jinn and what happens to other humans, they are truly in ghost land. We're going to talk more about that this week, too. So, wait a minute. We get all wrapped around the axle because, you know, we say, well, you know, that's black magic. Oh, that's demon worship. Oh, no, 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 no. They, 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 they worship the devil. You know, folks. It's this it's the same coin. Flip the coin over and you got a church, a mosque, a temple. You all got, you know, the, the temple thing. Because I'm looking at all this evidence, folks. We're all going to die. We're gonna each and every one of us will lay these bodies down and we're going to transcend. Now, the question is: transcend into what? Where? Where does consciousness go? Is there truly a separation of the body? You know, I taught this almost two years ago, folks. I taught you and I showed you the books where the, the idea came from. Our spirits, our body is a spirit separate from our soul. And depending on what your particular point of view is, it's... It's imprinted. It's kind of like the uh, the bomb that went off in Nagasaki. Those people were literally burnt by their molecules into that rock. Many believe that's where their spirits are trapped as well. So... <laughs> It, it's it's I'm just asking the simple questions, and I got a friend, you know, wants to know as well. So you know, when I look at this stuff, I had a dream, and and I was told that, you know, I've developed this this. I don't know if it's an attitude. I don't know if it's a quantitative quality. This is what I wrote from what they said. Test all spirits. 
Test them. Test them. Don't assume or take any of their so-called wisdom and knowledge on the surface. Test them. I mean, you know, if you got Azel, who was a badass, I'll take them on. I'll go one-on-one. I mean, what's the worst that's going to do? Kill me? I doubt it. I'll take on Gabriel, the same thing. Even though I know that son of a bitch can, you know, wipe out a, a two, 300,000 humans just like that. I get it. I get the story. But I don't know if it's particularly an angel, if it may be more of uh, the little green man in a spaceship. Or maybe that it's, in fact, the, uh, the guards. But this truly is a prison. Anyway, kind of goes well. Is it then? Does that apply apply only to sapiens? Us? I mean, the fact is, those that called themselves humans, who communicated, they made love, they got high. You know, they had barbecues. They were trying to figure it out as they were going. Just back in those days, you know. You had an idea who your enemy was. Today, you're not really sure. And then here comes sapiens. Now, the whole evolutionary jump that brought our genus into homo tree, man, I'm still trying to figure out, so was there a Lucifer there? Was there a Jesus there? Was there Yahweh? Was there no way? Which way? It's either my way or the highway. You know what I'm saying? Um, (laughs) Chris says, sounds like a good time. I I think it was. Uh, They may not have had electricity, but I wonder if they were able to jam on something, you know? Um, Everyone can make a recorder, you know, the flute. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I, folks, I, I, I just bring this out because it seems to me that we are remarkable beings in as much that who's ever, whoever, I, I think about this. So was it a different kind of a spirit that was in the Neanderthals? Was it a different kind of spirit over here with the Cro-Magnus? Is it a different kind of spirit over here with the Sapiens? And then I wonder, well, does reincarnation do crossbreeding? I mean, because if you're, if just think about this. If you were a Neanderthal, you're proud, man. Yeah, my species, we helped cultivate. We were great explorers made many discoveries. Okay, pretty cool resume for a species. I mean, they die, and then you're going to tell me that they somehow become sapiens? I mean, is our spirit a sapien spirit? Hmm, I don't know. Bing a bang a boom. <laughs> I'm just asking the questions. That's all. Because <laughs> I'm really, you know, I'm like everybody else, you know, just trying to figure this thing out. You know, in our conversation, our lunch on Saturday, it was it was delightful. Because what I'm talking about is exactly what y'all are talking about. Same questions. I just maybe extend it out a little bit because you know, uh, again ordained minister of the gospel. But yet no one ever taught me in, 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 in my whole Bible school and all my Bible training about Neanderthals, about Cro-Magnus. I mean, where do they fit into this timeline? Because, you know, it, it, the thing about it is, you, it depends if you look at 
two of the books in the Old Testament and one of the book in the New Testament, the book of Matthew, particularly, it says that we're less than 6,000 years old. In fact, we're probably, you know, less than 5,000 years old. And they can show it to you by, you know, their genealogy. Don't know. I think Robert Show was right on time. And I'm just extending this out. So if, if the sapiens are changing right now, we're going to become, I, I came up with one, uh, Homo Deus. Another one was Homo Deitatus, because we're, we're, we're data, you know, artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm trying to read some of the things on there. Because, again, there's something that happens to us in when we leave this realm. And I don't think it's quite the story that's been told to us. And it's kind of like the conversation that I had with our guest was, uh, I don't want to get my ass kicked. I just don't. I mean... Listen, in the, it, it, when we came into this realm, we had someone that cared for us. Now, even if you read these holy books, what happens when a god commands a human to crush the skull of babies? What about that soul? What about that spirit? And it bothers me because I'm going, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. We're all thinking that, man, we're all so aware, awake. <laughs> and I'm looking at the history of our species, and that, no matter how you want to slice it and dice it, you can say, well, no, 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 I wasn't, I didn't have anything to do with it. But yet it's in the genetic structure of us, our species. Again, that's what the Neanderthals said when they met the sapiens. Oh, crap, there goes the neighborhood. I mean, these guys will fight over anything, you know? <laughs> I wonder if this mothership coming, what that's about. What are they preparing us for? I mean, is it really the terraforming project? I mean, there is so much idiocy, but think about this. What if it's a part of this evolutionary chain, uh, this jump, this something that they're saying, the Genesis are saying that this evolution process is speeding up? What if that's part of the process? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> I mean... It's messed up, folks. It really is. We see particularly the area that, that we live in here. And it, again, you know, it's like living like a stranger in a strange land. You know, if if you're if you don't, if you're not Christian and you know, uh hold to that belief, well, you're almost like a second citizen or no non-citizen at all. And you're not supposed to ask these questions. Someone wrote me and said, why do you do that? Why do you ask all those questions? And you know, and that's what the person said in big, bold letters, and you know there's no answer. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> ask anything in my name as representing all who I am, and it shall be granted to you from the Father. Hmm. The greatest thing that Solomon did impressed Yahweh when Yahweh came before him and said, you could have asked for gold, you could have asked for anything, but you asked for wisdom. And for that, he got a gold star. Got to get really rich, had more sex than Hugh Hefner would ever hope to have. I mean, the dude, man, was just... <laughs> 
that dude knew how to party. That's all I got to say. He knew how to, I wonder what type of Viagra he was using about there. But, but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, people say, well, that's just, that's a sacrilegious stagger. No, it isn't. I just asked the questions, you know, because we're going to get with JD and Nina, and I hope as well we'll have uh, uh, Yurik uh, as well. I want to get into this because it's interesting. We're at a critical time where those who seek knowledge are going to have the opportunity to have at least one version of it. Because I keep on thinking, it's like, huh. What if there is this battle? This battle. I mean, and and I, I often wonder: Did Neanderthals or Cro Magnus have souls? Did they have a? Did they have a soul? They were human. Looked like us in virtually every way. Did they get a soul? Where's their soul? If they had no soul, why no soul? What did they have? They, they, they had compassion. I'm sure they had memories. Just asking for a friend, that's all. See, like King Solomon had a ring, and apparently the angel was speaking through him. That's channeling. That's what it is. It's channeling. You got a spirit... And you got a human saying, I speak in the name or whatever. That's channeling. Did it all the time in church. Thus saith the Lord. Who do you think you, and you know, you go like that. Who are you talking for? Is it you? Is it some big guy up in the cloud? You know, Moses was the first person to actually make use of the cloud. I'm just saying. But anyway, um, <laughs> hi, Lisa, what's up? Uh, yeah. Uh, Graham says, I'm not buying the Solomon, the wise one, wife who had enough. So how does a wise person with hundreds... Don't get me started on how many of the wisdom and concubines might possibly fit together because I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure out when the dude had any time to do anything at all. I mean, come on. Today, we would say that that person was sexually addicted and needed help. But back in his day, I guess it was a sign of virility and strength. I don't know. Ms. Lee says it's regeneration, cloning. Well, that means he spread his clone all over the place. I mean, don't get a black light because you're going to see that shit everywhere. Oh, man, that's that Solomon crap everywhere we go. <laughs> Rick says the confusion is real. Yeah, of course it is. It's designed that way. Uh <laughs> Lisa said the, the Bible is about, you know, coitus. That's, that's all it's about is coitus. Paul says that you should have coitus. He used that word, in fact, uh, when dealing with the Holy Spirit. Should be that intense. Wait a minute. That's trying to tell me that you're getting relations with spirit. I ain't getting that shit. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, folks, you just got thank you for hitting the like button. And, uh, you know, so the mothership is coming. I keep on thinking, why would an alien, why would any, like, let's say the Anunnaki are coming back. Let's say Inyel and Inki and then all the hall, they're bringing the band back. I mean, I don't think they're going to like what they see. I mean, I can hear that conversation now. I told you we couldn't trust them. Look what they've done. Fuck everything up down there. Well, can't let that continue on. <laughs> I think you're wrong there, Wayne. 
They love our women, that's for sure. Well, Dave, you may have a point there. Uh, if there's one thing history has shown, they dig the chicks. And they don't dig when we get all, you know, like the rooster. Don't touch the women. You can have the corn. You can have the sheep. Don't touch the women. <laughs> uh, Nina says, no mothership. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to watch your show last night, Nina. No mothership. Well, there you go. <laughs> I love this. I mean, because you know what? Some dude came down and told me that he was a fallen angel. And he, he you know, and I, I had my eye on this gal for a long time. I mean, you know, I've been going through the whole thing just to be able to, you know, get her attention. And some dude beams down from up there and says, the hell with that eye. And take, uh-uh. No. Yeah, I'll cut your throat, man. <laughs> uh, hey, K-Town, what's up? According to the lost book of Enki, uh, we're worse than King Solomon. Yeah, they look at us like cockroaches. They may even think we're worse than that. I don't know. Which brings back to my point then. So it's about time we turn the tables on these, you know, whoever they are. I tell you, in all the searching I've done in the occult and in, you know, the holy books and what have you, I still can't figure out who they really are. You tell me that that is God. I I, I'm, I I don't buy that anymore. But then you tell me about these angels. Then you tell me about the demons. Then you tell, and I'm going, you know what? I ain't buying that either. You know. Now, do I think that we can do some spooky stuff? Oh, I think we can. I think we can manifest some nasty looking ghosts. And who knows? There may, in fact, be this ghost land that is bridging, trying to get here. They want an invasion. They want to take soul land, ghost land, and imprint it upon the living land. I mean, now that would be a weird experience. Uh, just saying for a friend. Yeah, Billy Carson said there is no mothership. You know, I don't know how these people know that. I don't know that. Maybe it's a, you know, a psychops. I mean, I don't know. But you got to admit that, you know, the fact that they're even using the term is planting the seed. It's preparing. There may be no mothership, but the fact that they're saying it, folks, it's implanting. That's how you do it. You implant the thought like it's almost a post-hypnotic suggestion. When you hear the word mothership, you will worship Satan. You will get down on your knees. You know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, Lisa, they would. They would call him a, uh, a terrorist if Jesus came back. I can see him as he's on a white horse. Hi, guys. How you doing? I'm the one you're fighting for. You know, in my name, who the hell are you? Well, I, 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 I'm the, the one bringing peace. Well, who the hell is that army with you? Well, that's my army. They can be your... And that's when bullets start opening. <laughs> uh, I have talked about Antarctica. Did a number of shows. That's the thing about it is when you get... Thousands and thousands of uh, videos. Yeah, it gets it gets lost in the minutia. Okay, uh, I hope we get a mothership. <laughs> hey, Project Bluebeam, right? You know, it, it, is that what they're preparing us for? Things are messed up out there, folks. They've got something in the works. I just don't, you know, it's like, okay, what is it? Is it door number one, door number two, or door number three? Yeah. Brandy, what's up? Yeah, yep, exactly. There is a reason for it. I mean, it's like programming. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I want to make sure that they totally freak out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's throw a little bit of that in. That'll really get them going. I don't know. It's like, okay. I mean, the ships are up there in the skies. We know that. You know, it's like, okay, is it is it ours or is it Memorex? I don't know. 
Well, tomorrow I'll have Miss Trina on and stay tuned this week. We're going to get into some uh, folks at some point. We I, again, my wife and I were talking last night and, you know, I said, you know, isn't growing up an amazing experience? We're all growing up. None of us are old. None of us are young. We're growing up. Think about that. You're not getting old. You're growing up. It's the same you. The magic is, is the transformation. And that's the cool thing. And if you can come out loving yourself, finding a much more peaceful horizon, that's well worth the price, isn't it? I think so. Uh, what's that, Lisa? It has to be better than what's been going on. I'm for the big change. Bring the UFOs. I will bring the music and the libation. And I'll be right there with you, darling. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bring the brownies. And you can have one, more than one per customer. We'll give them away. <laughs> hey, Marie, good to see you. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Gilbert says, I have to get old. Fucking growing. Yeah, it's 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 just that way it is, you know. But you know, we can spread the joy out here. This little enclave that we got going. Thank you, you all. I mean, this is, I'll tell you, it's it's like a dose of the uh happy feet when you come here. It's got the joy, joy, happy thing going on. Uh, but uh yeah, brownies, yeah. Yeah. John says he'll bring the dune buggy. Oh, that will be fun. <laughs> we'll be a sky pilot for sure. Uh, well, because in our marriage, she doesn't want to do that. So I honor that as we all should. So, and that is the reason why. All right, everybody, we shall continue. Pinball wizards, all of us. Yes, indeed. You know, in my bachelor life, I had a number of pinball machines in my house. It was also I had a couple of slot machines, but, uh, you know, yeah. The foosball table was a lot of fun. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Happy trails, everyone, until we meet again. Love the one you're with, and you're welcome, Grace. Right back at you, darling. <laughs> and love one another, folks. I mean, seriously, uh, they want to they want to get a reaction. Let's give them a reaction of just love, joy, peace. You know, it's like the movie Tribes. How many of that with Jan Michael Vincent? You know, you put the the flower in the barrel of the gun. Yeah, just give them a big kiss. You know. Then you give them a big hug. And they say, well, I don't want to get in touch. That's all right, brother, sister. We can do it virtually. Yeah, there you go. Walk into the circle. There you go. <laughs> all right, folks. Much love to you. And uh, we'll.